Hello guys, welcome back to another video. So today we're going to be looking at the new E300 Alethium support. So we've been waiting on FPGAs for Alethium for quite a while now. We kind of knew that there were some private bitstreams, but we didn't have any access to these bitstreams. However, E300 from Osprey Electronics has come out with a new release for Alethium firmware. So we're going to get into some profitability, what it's going to cost you, the ROI times and stuff like that. So as you can see from their Twitter post here, Alethium firmware is getting up to 22 giga hash, which is a lot considering the wattage, which we'll cover later. They don't actually have the watts or efficiency on here right now. I've done some slight calculations just based on estimates of what they would be. I'm sure that they're either higher or lower by around one giga hash, but we'll get into more of that later. So here is the clock and the hash rates expected, minus by 6% on each side. If we go over, this just shows you how to set up the actual board if you have one of them. And right here we have the minor log, so actually showing it mining. The temperatures right now look pretty good for that. It's around 40 degrees. If it gets up to 50, 60, that still should be fine. However, when it starts getting up to 70, maybe that's time to turn it off. So if you go over to their website, they just display the same thing. If we go on algorithms, we all know that they have Ironfish, Radiant, Kylocoin, Etica, which is a new one that they just added, and finally Alethium, which they just added. I'm sure they will add efficiency, total wattage, and stuff like that in the future as time goes on, and more accurate hash rates, just because they're going to get more data from people around using them. However, not every board is the same when it comes to FPGAs. Some of them might be a little bit lacking. I remember back when they first released these, the third board would always pull less hash rate, which was strange, but I think that they fixed that problem going forward. So let's get into our watts and our hash rates. So this is by, not gigahash, let's change that. So this is by megahash, not gigahash. So you just divide by the 10,000 and it should give you the gigahash of 14.5 gigahash, 16.5 gigahash, 17.5 gigahash, 18, 19, so on. So we have the clock here, which is around 600 to 620. As we said with these figures right here, normally with the FPGAs that have been out there for a while, they have exact clocks here. However, just because this has just come out, they're gonna have rough estimates for clocks and hash rates. So I've input my own hash rate chart here and I've input my own wattage and efficiency line. So the hash rates were varying, so I just middled them, as in we have 14 to 15, so we're just going to go 14.5, 16.5, 17.5 for these hash rates. And we're going to do a little bit of calculations into profitability of these, if they're better than other coins that we see for the E300 right now. So right here, we have the clock of 600 to 620. We're getting a hash rate of around 14,500 pull in around 320 watts. This is obviously the most efficient, but you're not gonna have as much hash rate. This would be 14.5 giga hash, as I said previously. So this is obviously the lowest. I'm expecting this efficiency to be a little lower and it's probably gonna pull a little more watts if you do have it on hand. Then as we go up in the clock, we can go to 16.5 giga hash. That's pulling around 420 watts at an efficiency of 39 mega hash per watt then obviously as you go higher the efficiency gets lower we've seen this with basically all of them you can run them as you can see with etica the efficiency is the top at the lowest hash rate this is normal for a lot of coins and hardware the efficiency for kyla coin is the top at the lowest hash rate it just really depends on what you want to do with the board because you can go for high hash rates hit a load of blocks that might be the play. However, if you're really trying to push the profitability of your electricity, then you might want to go for a lower hash rate option and stick to the most efficient option. So this is roughly what we got for efficiency. I'm going to do a calculation on this hash rate with this watt, and then I'm going to do a calculation on the top hash rate with this watt. I don't believe that you'd probably hit anywhere up to here. The temperatures would probably be a bit too high running at this wattage and hash rate. I'm thinking maybe 65 to 70 degrees, which is all right, but it's not great. And it probably cause a lot of noise from the actual fans blowing through the FPGA boards. So let's go over to our Alethium mining calculator here. So let's take our first figure of 14.5 giga hash. 
and we're getting around 320 watts. Now, I believe that there is a fee of 10% for the actual miner, and obviously the pool fee is the same for whatever pool you're using. Uh, if we scroll up here, you can see it's around 0 0.9, uh, 1, 1, 1. We're just gonna average it out to one. One thing that I do wanna note as well that we're seeing here is actually a hash rate drop off. And this was around the release of the FPGA. So I'm wondering if they were taking or at least testing the FPGAs here and then taking them off to actually sell them out in terms of the E300s, the ones that Osprey Electronics hold and then they're shipping them out. So that's why we're seeing a rise upwards in hash rate. I'm not too sure about that. It might also be because the Alephium price dropped as well. However, let's get back to calculations. So if we click calculate here, it's looking at a profit of around $3.52. Now that is at 10 cents per kilowatt hour. So that's pretty good profits in terms of 10 cents per kilowatt hour that we're seeing there. We get a good revenue of around $5. The watts, you're not really spending that much because it's so efficient at these lower hash rate ranges. And the pool fee, obviously, and miner fee, that is going to have to be paid out. The profits that we're seeing here is $3.52. So 1.89 Alephium per day. And that's on average a block every one days. So it's probably going to be like 1.5 days. So you'd hit a block, you know, within the day, depending on the luck or within the two days, depending on the luck. So that's pretty good in terms of profitability. Now that's only at 10 cents per kilowatt hour. We can go into a different calculator and change that. However, let's just get a figure of what it would be at the top end of hashing. So we have 21.5 giga hash, and this is at around 900 watts is what my estimate would be. So as you can see here, the revenue obviously is gonna be higher. It's $7, however, the profits are still gonna be high, but they are also not gonna have that same profit margin, if that makes sense. You'd still have to keep paying for the power. So the only reason that you'd wanna do this type of mining, where you're at the top hash rate ranges, is if you have very, very low power cost. Just because as soon as you start up in the power consumption, you're gonna to have to pay more for power. So at 10 cents, it's fine. I'm sure at 20 or 30 cents, it's probably gonna be fine as well. However, we can actually take it over to a calculator here because that lithium one, let's go for 21.5 on the giga hash, the watt is 900. And then we can actually input our thing to 30 here and click calculate. So as you can see here, if it was at 30 cents per kilowatt hour, at that hash rate, you're getting way less profitability, only 68 cents. So it would be more beneficial to mine. I'd probably say in this mid range because you get a good mix of profitability plus yield of Alephium, depending on whether you're solo mining or not. I believe solo mining is pretty viable using these. So you could get blocks pretty much every day. If we're going off strictly to hash rate yield in terms of we want the most amount of Alephium, but paying the less, it's probably going to go with this figure here. If you're pulling 420 watts, that's a good efficiency or so more hash rate. But we'll have to see when everyone actually starts using them and get the right figures for these hash rates and wattages. These are very, very rough estimates, but it kind of gives you an idea. You're making around, let's say, $3 at this end and then around $4 at this end at 10 cents per kilowatt hour. However, if you don't have those lower prices for power, then I would stick to the lower end if you have one of these boards. Now, when it comes to ROI, if we click it back to hash rate NO right here, with an investment, I believe these are around $5,000. So 5,199, I know that the ROI is not gonna be great on this. Let's just say that you were at 10 cents per kilowatt hour and you had it at the top hash rate that we're seeing, so the 21.5 giga hash and the 900 watts the ROI time is 141 days. So not really great in terms of mining for ROI. If we click actually on the FPGA section here, you can see that the Osprey E300, I don't believe that this has been updated for lithium yet. With a cost of 5,199 here and a power of 10 cents per kilowatt hour, the top profitability is still on Ironfish. You can kind of get the same profitability that we saw on lithium. 
at this top range. However, that's kind of expected because they're both Blake 3 algorithms. So the profits on Ironfish aren't going to last for too long for all of you out there. The ROI is 124 days. On that, it was 1,054. So ROI might be potentially better on the Alephium one, but I'm sure anyone who's bought one is kind of looking forward into the future. If you've got one of these, I believe that they were lower priced at the start. They were around 4,000. So that would have been a good time to pick one of those up. But right now it's looking like you can still make profits on one of these E300s. It just costs a lot to get into it. And obviously the ROI time is not great. If we actually up the cents per kilo hour, let's put it up to 30. And you can still be profitable up to 30 cents per kilo hour. Let's see if we hit negative at 60. I'm willing to bet it's around, yeah, the 45 to 50 range that you can be profitable on these machines. And as I said with the hash rate, as you can see, we have a massive spike upwards here. Now that's probably because the price of Alephium was also going up, but I'm sure that some of this hash rate has to be the testing of these FPGAs. Now I don't know where they're reporting this one from, I believe it's obviously pulled from the pools, but we've seen a drop off as we see in here, and then it comes back upwards. If we click on Hero Miners, we can actually look at the top 10 right here. And it should display the top 10 miners for hero miners. So we're looking at around 8.96 terahash. So I'm willing to bet that a lot of these people on here do have FPGA miners unless they're massive GPU mining farms. So overall, it does look profitable. If you have one, I wouldn't recommend buying one of these E300s right now. It's way too expensive and the ROI time is just not there. Alephium, obviously, the price can pick up. Radiant, as we saw in the new, is probably going to have ASICs coming soon as well. So these Ospreys will kind of become redundant for Radiant, but that's good for other coins, I suppose. And Alephium, with this progression into public FPGA bitstreams, we probably are going to see ASICs for Alephium as well. So hopefully you guys enjoyed. If you did, please leave a comment below. On your thoughts about Alephium FPG. We've been waiting for these for ages since my first video. I think it was around nine months ago where we knew that there were some FPGAs out there. So leave a comment your thoughts on that. Like the video, subscribe for more content like this.